In this episode, we'll talk about what you can do with your audio if you are finding that your waveform is taller on one end than it is on the other. And that is a problem because it potentially cheats you of headroom. Let me just play a sample here for you, talk about why it's a problem, and what you can do to fix it. This is a sample I wanted to use here just to demonstrate that there are some voices that plain and simply result in uneven or asymmetric waveforms. There's nothing that I'm aware of that you can do. It's just the timbre of certain voices or the character of certain voices somehow create asymmetric waveforms. If I get an audio recording here, this is spoken word recording here, I have a waveform. And in this particular case, you can see that the peak is at about minus four dB. But on the opposite end of this waveform, it's closer to minus 11 or minus 12 dB. So it is definitely asymmetric or uneven. Now, how is that even a problem? Let's talk about that. First of all, if I come over here into my loudness control and I get a measure of the overall loudness of this audio, it sits at minus 27.5. That's not loud enough to publish online, in my opinion. Normally, I'd need to get a mono signal like this up to about minus 20 or minus 19 to put it into a reasonable loudness that's easy for people to listen to and digest without having to crank their volume up or down, depending on what they were listening to last. So my goal is to get this to minus 20, let's say. Now to get to minus 20, I need to boost it by seven and a half dB, but you can see here, I only have headroom space between the top of this waveform and zero dB of 4.2 dB. So I can't just crank it up seven and a half dB to get to my target because then this will clip and distort. Now, you could say I could just bring in a compressor and pull that peak down, but that's a little odd if you're not pulling down on this side, but you are compressing it on this side. It's just a kind of an inefficient way to do things. Fortunately, with Isotope RX, there is another way to solve this. We can actually even this up without changing the sound itself. Now, the first thing I'm going to hear is from a lot of people, well, if you just used a quality microphone, Curtis, you never would have had this problem. Actually, this was recorded with a Sennheiser MKH 8050. Uh, it's about a $1,200 microphone, as I recall. I used Canary Star Quad cabling, some of the more expensive, high-quality cabling available, and a Sound Devices 888 recorder. Again, what is that, a seven or $8,000 recorder mixer. So it's not cheap gear, it's high-quality gear, and yet some voices will still do things like this. It's just the nature of those voices. I find it more common in men's voices, not every men's voice, but more commonly I'll see it in men's voices. And I also see it quite a bit in brass instruments. So if you're doing instrument recording, it can show up in those cases as well. So let's go ahead and pull in the phase plugin. Now this is something that is available in Isotope RX elements, standard and advanced. There is this adaptive phase rotation option. You just go ahead and put a check in that box, click render and watch what happens to this waveform here totally evens up. What does it sound like now? This is a sample I wanted to use here just to demonstrate that there are some voices that plain and simply result in uneven or asymmetric waveforms. There's nothing that I'm aware of that you can do. It's just the timbre of certain voices. Sounds virtually the same to me. And also at a practical level, you can see we now have minus 6.6 .6 dB of headroom. So we have more space to go ahead and push the overall audio levels up to get closer to our target. Now, I'm still gonna probably need a compressor to bring this down a little bit, but when I compress it, it's gonna be compressing both ends of the waveform, both the top and the bottom. And I won't have to do nearly as much compression to reach my target of minus 20 or minus 19 LUFS. So if you're not familiar with the concept of loudness or loudness normalization, I have put links to videos where we discuss that in great detail over here in the upper right hand corner hope that was helpful for you if you have any questions go ahead and leave those down below and if you've not already subscribed make sure you do that and we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video talk to you soon